So, basic makeup to the Solar Pathfinder. You can buy it with or without this case and stand, but it's it's handy to have something to carry it around in. Um, let's just take a look at all the components and then we'll put it together. So, you know, what we've got is we've got this, first we've got this base here, right? And it's got a compass built in for us and it's got a bubble level built in for us as well. So one, we can use the compass to orientate to, to south, right? And we can use the bubble level to make sure that we're leveled out, um, you know, for our plane, right? So you got a little bubble in your compass? Yeah, yeah there's a little bubble in there. <laughs> um, and then this little inner part turns, okay? See how that moves like that? And there's a little white dot out here. So we buy these sun path charts, okay? for our latitude. And this chart here is for 37 to 43 degrees northern latitude. Okay, so that fits, we, we land right in the middle of that. We're about 40 degrees northern latitude. And they sell these for all the different latitudes around the world, right? So we just have to make sure we buy the ones that, that we're gonna be using. And when we look at this Pathfinder chart, okay, we see a few different things. Going vertically on this axis are the months of the year. Okay, but they don't go in order. Right? They, don't, they don't go in order because they're going in the, what I would call the solstice or the sun's order, right? So we've got December, January, November at the top, and then February and October are together, okay? And March and September are together because those are basically fall and spring and they're the same, okay? As far as what we're gonna get from the sun. Where is the sun's? Yeah, they're mirror images of each other. And then we've got, you know, August, April, and then the summer months down at the end here, okay? And then going across the, the horizontal axis here is the time of day. So we start at five in the morning, we work our way up to solar noon, and then we're over to seven in the evening, okay? So that's sort of the, the layout of the chart. Now, what we see these little numbers in the grid here, right? And there's little numbers and it starts at like one out here and in the middle we might see seven or six or eight or nine okay tiny little numbers i'll pass it around so everybody can see oh sorry um <laughs> so so basically what we can do is we can add up all these numbers for one month okay because this line here that I'm tracing across is for April, right? That's April all the way across throughout the day. So we can add up all those numbers and it's gonna give us 100, 100%. Okay, so if we get shading anywhere on here, then we don't add up the number that's shaded. And now we can get a percentage value for each month, okay? So we can see like, oh, if we get shading over in this part, we can add up all the numbers and see what our percentage of solar gain that we're going to accept for each month payments, okay? Often we don't even use that feature unless we have a lot of shade in somewhere. Then we might run those calculations. But typically we're looking to have this area between 9 and 3, okay, no shade present at all during that that time of day for all the months. That's that's ideally what we're shooting for. We can't always get that and sometimes we make some compromises. So that's that's sort of the Pathfinder sheet, magnetic declination, right? So we know that we're 12 degrees, so now we can just simply spin the Pathfinder chart until we line up at 12 degrees here because they've got some degree increments across the top for us. Okay, and so now we already have this set up to account for magnetic declination. Um, you basically, if you look at a map, they'll always tell you what magnetic declination is for your area, and it's in the it's in the textbook to here in the book which way we need to go. So you can see we're skewed to the west, right, of south. So we're gonna have to adjust back towards the east. Yeah, you could be anywhere from 10 to maybe 13, yeah, so depending on where you are in the state. So you can just look at these charts and you can see, you know, obviously as you get closer to the, to the pole, the effect, you know, gets a little bit more drastic, right? If you're way up in, in Montana or Washington, you can see, well, wow, they're way out at 19 to 20 degrees, um, getting closer to the pole. But the nice thing is, even if we forget to adjust for magnetic declination, it's not a huge issue. There is some forgiveness there, okay? If we're off 10 degrees of true south, 
we're not going to lose such a drastic amount of, of our power from the modules that, that we're going to suffer a severe penalty. We might lose 5 or 10 percent, which, hey, that matters. That adds up, you know, but it's not like your system isn't going to work at all. Right? So that's sort of the how we set this up. And then we've got, we've got a little stand, okay, that this goes on, and we can put this telescoping stand, right, these little telescoping legs. We won't use the stand today. Uh -huh. We'll just, we'll just place it on the table. And now we're ready to take the globe and put it over top. So the globe actually mimics the curvature of the Earth. That's how we're able to see a snapshot of everything that's going to happen for the entire year in one glance. Okay? So we snap this over top, right? And then we're going to see reflections from anything around us that, that would actually shade this particular site. Okay? And, and they gave us some little slots here in the side. This actually comes with a little uh, sort of a wax crayon pen and we can trace out the shading that we see. That's one way to do it. It's not my preferred method. What I like to do is when I have this set up at a site, I just like to come over with my digital camera and just shoot a picture, right? And now I've captured that for that site and I can move around. So what we do then is we, to read this, we're going to want to be standing directly over top of the unit and looking at it, right? It can't be, you know, from the side or you know, from the front or whatever. We want to be standing directly over it. actually works best on a somewhat overcast and cloudy day because we don't get this big sunspot glare, right, which we're going to have to cover up with our hand. Okay, so on an overcast day, it actually even works a little bit better because you don't have to deal with that glare from the sunspot on there. But you can still block it out with your hand, it's not a big deal, okay? So, basically what we can do is we can get set up so that we're facing true south, right? So I got my compass needle pointing south, and I get my bubble level in the center of that little black concentric circle, and I'll let everyone hold this and do it, okay? And then basically what I'm gonna do, I think it's a little harder to hold it in the hand than I'm sitting on. I'll block out the sun a little bit, and now I can see any shadow or any reflections of any shading that I have. And, and you just kind of have to ignore, like, you're going to see some, some reflection of these little parts of the, of the, yeah, the little parts of the actual tool here. But I can see, well, I can see this big hole right in front of me, okay? And I can see you, um, and I can see this top of this little tree, but it's not actually going to prevent any. It's not actually going to shade me where I'm at at the moment. I actually have a pretty good sight, but this tree is going to cause some issue in the afternoon. And you kind of have to look for that. You can see that building and that tree there are going to give us shading um, oh, about right after 4 o'clock and mostly for the summer months in there. Okay? And that's basically... It, it reflects... It re you get a reflection from this dome, and then it, it it sort of casts a shadow on this chart here. You really have to be standing. Yeah, yeah, you have to stand directly over it. You can't see it from where you're on this tool. And there are a couple other tools out there available as well. This, I think, is 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 the most basic and, and sort of entry level tool. Um, the other two that I'm aware of are both both sort of heavily computer integrated and camera, and so you're talking. You know, thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, it spits out very nice, um, you know, professional quality reports. That if you're working with those kind of clients, then I think that's a valuable tool. However, it does take more time to use those some of those tools on the site, and it adds that extra cost. And so, to me, for people that are just getting into this, I think this tool works just fine. Right? We can buy this tool for like two hundred fifty dollars. Is it easier like to use it? Oh yeah, if you hold it out. There, there you go. That works great. Now you can really see it. That works really good. Now you can see a lot of stuff. You can see the trees over here. You can see this fence line right at the top. You can see this tree over here, the building. You can see all of that really well. It's right now. You need to look, yeah. You need to look directly over it. You can't be standing back from it. You have to be looking directly over top. That's why the stand is nice.